for those of you who have seen that uh, movie um, with uh, Chevy Chase and what's her name? Real good actress. I uh, keep forgetting her name. Beverly D'Angelo, was that her name? Um, the Griswolds, yeah? Uh, <laughs> family Griswold. And they took a on their took a European vacation. They come through Germany and you know, watch they come right during Oktoberfest and, and uh that is South Germany. Yeah, that is not that is not the same thing as um what's up here in the north. Yeah. It, different parts of Germany have different cultures. Subcultures, I guess you could say, and it's it even shows in their their dialect. In some cases, it almost sounds like a completely different language. Yeah, like for example, when you go really north, um, it's it's like a, a, it's so hard to understand. Yeah, it's it's next to impossible. You don't even know what they're saying. Uh, and when you um, when you um, go south, then it gets different again. Yeah, and go east, it's different. And go west, it's different. And every every part is is like its own little country within a big country. Yeah, and some of them you can kind of understand, and some of them you can't. I think the one uh, what I've heard in language school when I first came here was that the the ones who speak really clear um, are the are the people who are in from Hanover, Hanover, Germany. They speak what's called perfect German, and it's true. Yeah, I have a couple of friends over there, and when I talk to them, it's just really very enjoyable, not only because they're friends, but because I understand them. You see, in Berlin, there's a dialect here, and when they speak, <clears throat> excuse me, don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, the locals uh, that grew up here. And uh, it's, it's crazy, yeah, it's really, really crazy. But that's how it is, yeah, that, and, and you see what this is? This is identity. Now, what if somebody came along and said, hey, all you Germans, we're going to only have one dialect. That's what they call it, yeah, a dialect. So we're going to eliminate all the dialects in Germany, and we're only going to have one, except one. Yeah, we're only we're going to eliminate. Let me say that again. We're going to eliminate all dialects except one. In that one dialect, we are all going to learn it. So we all speak the same language in our same dialect in this country. What do you think would happen if somebody said that? It's not. It's not going to be acceptable. They will make laws saying no. We find this unacceptable. This is our culture. This is part of our vocal or audio identity. When we hear this dialect, we know where people are from. This is part of our heritage. You will not take that away. Yeah? But see, this is what's happening in Indian country today. There's a group calling itself Lakota Language Consortium. They are not Lakota people. And, <coughs> excuse me, let me say that again. They are not Lakota people. They do have Lakota people working for them. But they are not Lakota people. The, the people who are in charge, I should say, are not Lakota people. And the Lakota people who do work for them are getting paid. Yeah, so they have their what do you call that token Indians. 
to support them. But most Lakota teachers do not support them. They do not want them around at all because they are very disrespectful. Yeah, Somebody who never grew up in your country comes to you and tells you the correct way to speak your language. That's outrageous, isn't it? That's exactly what the Lakota Language Consortium is doing. Yeah, They're set up on Standing Rock, uh, Sioux Reservation, and they set up on re- the, the Catholic parts of Pine Ridge. Rosebud has banned them. Cheyenne River, when I lived there, Cheyenne River banned them too, but they might change that too because some of the Lakota language teachers are beginning to work with uh, this Lakota language consortium. And I think if Sitting Bull knew what was going on, he would drive them out because they're changing the Lakota language. They're teaching a way to speak that we never spoke like that. For example, in English, it's perfectly okay to say good morning. But in Lakota, it's not. If you just say good morning in Lakota, that is hihani waste. If you say that, you're going to be considered cold-hearted because it's saying to the fluent speakers that you don't really want to be there, that you don't really want to be in the presence of the people that you're greeting. Yeah? Real fluent speakers are going to say something like, or a variation of, or for men would say women would say but when men are speaking in, in a very informal way among close friends and relatives they will say see these are exceptions to the rule but Lakota Language Consortium is going to say, no, you must just say, Hihani Washte. You see what I mean? And then they might say, um, all men must say, Hihani Washte Yellow. And all women must say, Hihani Washte Ye. This is, this is very, very strict. They're they're saying there's no exceptions to the rules. That sounds Catholic, isn't it? Because they are funded by the Catholic Church. So, the way they're speaking... See, yellow is a male gender ending that goes at the end of formal sentences. And ye is the female gender ending that goes against their formal sentences. But when you're among friends and relatives, you don't have to say the gender ending. And again, when men are in front of friends and relatives, they don't have to say, uh, you know, the absolute male version. Like the word wachionke, which means I see you. Technically, a man would say wachionke lo. But among friends and relatives, you can just say wachionke. See, that's the exception. But the Lakota Language Consortium says, no, there's no exception. See, they're telling us how to speak our language. So if a man is among friends and relatives and he's speaking to a small group of people, and he could say, Iyuha lila tayan wachionkape lo. No, wachionkape. He could say, and the Lakota Language Consortium person will say, no, that's incorrect. Even though this man is 84 years old. This young, 20-something-year-old white linguist is telling this 84-year-old Lakota fluent speaker who's spoken Lakota all his life that he's, te- that he's speaking wrong, that he's speaking incorrectly. That's what's happening.
That's what the Lakota Language Consortium is doing. This is why most Lakota teachers don't want them around. We're having a battle in the language. We're trying to save the language, but the uh, Lakota Language Consortium is trying to uh, change it at the same time. They want all Lakota people to only speak one way. See, in Lakota country, there's uh, Lakota spoken on five reservations and also up into Canada and parts of Montana and uh, on another reservation called Rocky Boy, there's Lakota and Dakota. That's another dialect of our nation. And every location has its own flavor. It's the same language. It's just that there's a flavor to it. It's like that's that's like a sub dialect. It's like that's part of the identity. Yeah? And somebody says, How are you? And if that person says, Don't kill no, um how, let's see, I gotta remember the other one. Uh, if he says Don't the that's telling you if that person's either from Pine Ridge or Rosebud. That's part of their identity. If somebody says, that's going to be from Cheyenne River or Standing Rock. See reservations. See what I mean? It's part of the identity. Everybody knows what it means. You learn both ways, but you use the one that you that the people use where you come from. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people, uh, you know, non-native people who want to learn our language, they think there's only one way to say anything. So they'll say, which one am I supposed to say? Is it Tunikskaha or is it Tokaskaya Unhe? Which one is correct? They're both correct. It depends on where you're from. Yeah, and Lakota Language Consortium is saying no, nope, just one is correct, the other one's wrong. That's what they're saying. You see what I mean? They're, they're really trying to change our language into something that's standard, and that is really disrespectful to those to the Lakota people. How dare a non Lakota or non native organization tell a native people how to speak? Yeah, that's that's just not right. That is absolutely not right. So this is why most Lakota language teachers do not want to have anything to do with Lakota Language Consortium. And when they come on the reservation, they're very disrespectful. They don't identify themselves. They come as, and they act real friendly and they gather information with by interviews. And then they, next thing you know, a year later, they're with that information, they made a book and they want the tribes to buy that book. It's a money-making thing for them. And they want the tribal councils to force all schools on a reservation to use that book. And this, and some uh, Shine River Sioux tribe, back in 2001, I think, they told them to leave and never come back. They said, if you come set foot on a reservation, we're turning you over to the FBI because you're violating a tribal order. Uh, Rosebud has also told them to stay off. Pine Ridge, they're too busy arguing amongst themselves that they got, you know, since Lakota Language Consortium is a Catholic uh, organization, and Red Cloud Indian School is also a Catholic school because Red Cloud turned Catholic in the end. Um, they, they have a strong foothold in that school. Standing Rock totally supports uh, Lakota Language Consortium. So you see the different reservations. And, and uh, I think Sitting Bull, I know Sitting Bull would not like that. 
and they named the uh, uh, the university on Standing Rock Sioux Reservation is named after Sitting Bull, and they are using the um, the Coeur Language Consortium materials there. That to me is a slap in the face. It's very disrespectful to a great man. And I've seen the materials because I, I whenever something new comes out, I get it. Because if it's good, I will use it. And the only other other materials that I really recommend, other than mine, are from the Rosebud Sioux Tribe by Albert Whitehat Sr. He and I think very alike. Yeah, this is the only other materials that I recommend. I don't recommend anything coming out of Pine Ridge because it's it's uh, there's something not right in it. And Standing Rock is all the Coral Language Consortium. So I don't recommend any of that. I've been through their materials too. And there are mistakes. There's mistakes in grammar. So it's funny that they're trying to standardize the language, but at the same time they're making mistakes in grammar. Grammar is the backbone of the language. If you have that wrong, then you're speaking wrong. And yet they're saying, you know, it's the other way around. So I wanted to kind of touch up on this just right away because somebody asked me about this. Uh, hey, I have this uh, new Lakota dictionary and you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, it's, this guy was this this was done by uh, a guy from the Czech Republic. I'm not going to say his name because I'm not going to promote this disrespectful man. It's not even a man. Yeah, this guy from the Czech Republic. What he did was he made a website several years ago, and he attacked every Lakota language book out there, including mine. And then I thought to myself, this guy is a fool. He's a jackass because when you are learning the language, you're also learning the customs. And one of the customs is called respect. You don't humiliate or attack people in a public forum, whether it's in person or on the Internet. You don't do that because that's communication. And whatever communication you send out comes back to you four times as strong. So this was telling me that he's only interested in the language and he has absolutely no interest in the culture whatsoever. So he tries to humiliate all Lakota language teachers who are really Lakota, who are fluent, who grew up with the language and wrote, wrote books on it. He attacked all of that. When, and his materials have sentences that Lakota people would never say because of the perspective. Yeah? So when you speak our language, you, you speak it in a way that the words are are embracing the listener. Or if there's a difficulty, then it's going to express that too in a respectful way. That's why there's no cuss words in Lakota. Because everything is done in a respectful way. But this guy has absolutely no respect for Indians whatsoever. And at the same time, he's he's saying that, you know, the Lakota language materials, are, I mean, Lakota language consortium materials are the best. That's what he's saying. You, it, it, how can they be the best when they totally disrespect the culture and the first language speakers? The first, uh, Lakota being the first language speakers. They totally disrespect. How can it be the best when it disrespects just about everything that has to do with with being Lakota? It showed me how how dumb this guy is. He just sees it from one point of view. And that's very narrow-minded. He's saying his way 
is the correct way and everybody else is wrong. Then he sided with the Lakota Language Consortium shortly after that. Yeah, and uh, so they that this is a really good example of how they they do not they have no interest in Lakota culture because they are Catholic. They want Indians to be Catholic, and they're using the language to bring them in. How deceptive is that? Yeah, using our language against us. The dictionary is just, their dictionary, I should say, is just full of Catholic interpretations of spiritual, Lakota spiritual uh, concepts. And this is, this is ethnocentrism. And it's racism as well. You see why most Lakota teachers don't want to have anything to do with the Lakota Language Consortium. So, this is uh, this is uh, something I wanted to to um, to, to to throw out there, yeah. Because, uh, like I said, somebody asked me about that, and and I said I will answer you on this radio show because there's a lot of people that may be looking at their materials and they may be wondering. You know, if they should, um, they're wondering if they should um, buy their materials or not. And I'm telling you, no, don't waste your money because it's incorrect information. And I'm not saying this in a dualistic way, I just shared with you why. It's incorrect. It disrespects the culture. It does not recognize the Lakota uh, spiritual and cultural beliefs. It doesn't recognize them whatsoever. It's just looking at the language by itself. And they're speaking the language from a non-native perspective. Good morning. It's okay to say in English, but not in Lakota. In Lakota, you say, it's really good to see you this morning, or I'm really happy to see you this morning, or it's really nice to see you this morning. At first, and then, But first, you address the person as a relative. Even if you're not related, you still call him or her a relative. Yeah? So, when you're not related, you use the cousin terms if you're in the same generation. If, you, if, you, if you're talking to somebody who's from your parents' generation, then you use either aunt or uncle. If you're talking to somebody from your children's generation, then you say either niece or nephew. Yeah? But when you really are related to somebody, you use the, the correct term, whether it's cousin, brother, sister, yeah? You use the correct term after that. So you say, say the, um, the kinship term first. So my, my really good special friend here in Germany, in Nicola, I would say Hankashi because uh she's uh not we're not related. So I would say Hankashi. That's the man's word for his female cousin. So I would say to her, Hankashi Ampetukile Lila Tayawa Chionke. See I'm among of I'm with a very, very, very close friend. 
who has been with me for 16 years. So I'm going to say, If Nicola was somebody I was meeting for the first time, then I would say, But the other words, Lila Daya, means really nice. It's really nice to see you today. Ampetukile is is today. Really nice to see you today. But let's change it to morning, yeah? The uh because that's what we're talking about. It's the morning greeting. So I would say Hokashi Hihanile Lila Dawa Chionke. Cousin, it's really I'm really happy to see you this morning. And it gives off other uh, feelings, like, oh, I feel so nice because you're here. That's what it's saying, too. So the words are really embracing. You don't just say, he honey, was dead. Now do you see how that's cold-hearted? See, you have to know the cultural perspective to speak our language correctly. That's the way it is with any language. For example, in German, when you want to say, I'm hungry, technically you would say, Ich bin hungry. Technically. But not many people say that. They say, Ich habe hunger. I have hunger. That's what it says. Yeah? Ich habe hunger. That's what they say when they're hungry. You see what I mean? You have to know the culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to know the culture of that language to speak that language correctly. And Lakota Language Consortium is just looking at the language and totally, totally disrespecting the culture. They don't want to have anything to do with Lakota culture or spirituality. This is why most Lakota teachers are against them. So it's not, we're not saying, well, we don't like them because they're bad. That's not it. It's because we have a bunch of good reasons to not want to have anything to do with them. And it's so disrespectful the way they do things. If they had come to the reservation and said, identified themselves. They say, we're really interested in helping you save your language. See, already this sounds nice. We're in, we're, we want to help you save your language. See how nice that sounds? Then if they kept with that way of thinking, who knows what wonderful things could have happened. But they didn't come like that. They came sneaking in interviewing people and not compensating for it. And as a result, they they um, stole information. Then I put it in books, and now they're trying to sell it back to us. It's like they stole our language, put it in a book, now they're trying to sell, us, sell our own language back to us. What does that sound like to you? That's a thief and a con artist. And that totally violates all Lakota virtues. It violates the virtues of any culture that's healthy. It's dishonest. It's disrespectful. Yeah, it's the opposite of generosity. There's no wisdom in it. And there's no humility. Because they put down everything else that's not theirs. If it's not from them, they put it down. They say, where's the best? They're not humble whatsoever. They break all Lakota virtues. See? So this is, uh, I just wanted to state that right off the top of the show tonight because this is how they are. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are very, 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 very disrespectful to Lakota people. 
And for them, this is a way to generate income. They're only into the money of this. They're, they're, and they want the esteem that uh, the uh, they want to be praised for say it's, it's, it's this whole messiah complex where they want to be seen as the savior of the language this is why they don't want people like me because I'm doing a better job at it because I'm following <coughs> excuse me because I am following Makota virtues and I'm following the cultural rules and my materials are in the Lakota perspective. So I'm a thorn in their side. So they've attacked me as well. But I just I just let let it happen because I want the world to know they are the oppressor. And if I attack back in the same way they attacked, then it shows I am either you know an oppressor or or a victim. So I'm on the same level as them. If I respond like that, that's a classic oppressor abuse abuser. I mean oppressor victim duality which is a violation of Lakota spiritual laws, Lakota natural laws. So instead, I checked them out. I took the time to research them, and I found out where they're from, uh, where their money's coming from, and their intentions, and the way they do things. I looked at their materials, I really took the time to go through them very carefully and I didn't find one good thing about this group whatsoever. So I checked out my facts. Yeah, I I gathered my facts and then I checked them out. I took the time to do that because when you live a healthy life, this is what you do to yourself. You do this to come to peace with your past. And this teaches you how to to uh, learn from difficult experiences that will come later. That's part of life. But the thing is, it's not bad because what you do is you end up learning from it and making the most of it, and you end up in a really nice place. So difficulty is like something that that is asking you to complete it. And when you do, you receive blessings like knowledge and wisdom. And you have peace. You maintain, nurture the peace that's inside of you. Yeah? So this is... that. Um, that's taking the time to check things out. That's what it's going to teach you. Yeah? When you when you establish that kind of peace in your life, it's teaching you a new skill that you will use the rest of your life as long as you live a healthy life. And that's whenever you encounter something new for the first time, you take the time to check it out. And that's what I did with this group. And I found nothing good about them. They are an oppressive organization. So when it when when I at the uh, Lakota language program on Sitting Bull Community College on Standing Rock Sioux Reservation accepts this group, it shows to me that the language must be practically dead up there because they are they don't they don't see that the Lakota Language Consortium is violating Lakota concepts. They don't see that, which means they must not have it. Yeah, the Lakota uh, teachers on Standing Rock Sioux Reservation that uh, and they must not have 
the Lakota perspective, they must not know it. Because if they had it, they could see they would be able to see right through this group for what who they really are. So something tells me that most of the Lakota language teachers on Standing Rock are Catholic or Episcopal. Because they don't live the Lakota way. They live the Christian or Catholic way. Most Indians, most Lakota language teachers on Standing Rock are not traditional. That's why they accepted Lakota language consortium. Like attracts like. is a basic Lakota star knowledge concept. However you are, is what you're going to attract. That's how nature is. So the fact that Sitting Bull Community College embraces the Lakota Language Consortium as well as Red Cloud School on Pine Ridge Reservation, this is telling me that these people do not believe in the Lakota way. Because like attracts like. The Lakota Language Consortium doesn't believe in the Lakota way either, as I said earlier. So the fact that Rosebud Sioux Tribe made a law, they made a tribal law, banning the Lakota Language Consortium from their reservation, that's showing me that the Rosebud teachers are very traditional, that they still have the Lakota perspective. That makes me happy. Because half of me is from there. That's where my father is from. My name, Little Elk, that's a Rosebud name. It's a lot of Little Elks on Rosebud Sioux Reservation. It's a common name there. On Cheyenne River, I was the only one. <laughs> my mom and dad got divorced when I was, uh, well, they separated when I was two years old. And I think when I was eight years old, they got divorced. And I grew up on Cheyenne River, uh, so I learned that way of speaking Lakota. Yeah? But I never forget my Rosebud relatives. My Rosebud relatives, when I meet them, they're really nice to me. They're more nice to me than my mom's relatives. Yeah, Because uh, my mom's uh, cousins were very, very Christian. And the New Testament says that if... Uh, if a divorced person marries a second time, he's he's uh, living in adultery and he's forcing his new uh, spouse to live in adultery too. And that any child born from that kind of sinful union is considered an a, a abomination before God. So my mom's cousins, you know, being Christians, they treated me mean. They considered me an abomination because... My mother uh, was my dad's second marriage. So in in my mother's cousin's eyes, in their their Christian eyes, they saw this. They didn't like my dad because they they felt that my dad was forcing my mother to live in in uh, adultery, and that I since I'm born from this, that I am unholy. <laughs> this is the New Testament. It's not. It's not from the Old Testament. This is from the New Testament. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's in Matthew. Yeah, I think Matthew chapter five or twelve. One of those two. It, it says this. So um, this is why my Shine River relatives, even though I grew up with them, they were very mean to me. Most of them. Some of them were good. But most of them were very mean to me. So when I meet my father's side of the family, those people are more traditional. Yeah? They live the traditional perspective. And so they embrace me. When I go there and I meet them, they embrace me. Oh, we're so happy you came back. 
you know, it's good to know you. I'm glad you're my cousin. I'm glad you're my nephew. Yeah, we love you. We don't ever forget that. We're your family. Jeez, my mom's side of the family never said things like that to me. That shows me how traditional the Rosebud Sioux tribe still is. Because on Shine River, they're trying to be Christian. So most Shine River people um, are Christian influenced. Even if they're not, even if they don't think they're Christian, they're still Christian influenced. They see things as good versus evil. And there's no such thing in nature. Therefore, in the Lakota ancient way, there is no good versus evil concept. For example, when our ancestors burned sage, it was to make the env- the area conducive to spiritual ceremony, activity. But today's Lakota people, they say, we're burning sage to cleanse the bad spirits away. <laughs> <laughs> you see the the difference? <clears throat> we never had that concept of evil spirits. That doesn't exist in Lakota Star Knowledge stories. It's humans who create that concept. But in reality, that doesn't exist in nature. You might have unhealthy That means unhealthy can become healthy, or unhealthy can be neutralized. It can be brought to peace. That means it can change. But when you believe in good versus evil, when something is evil, it's always evil. It can never change. And when something is good, it must stay good. You see, that's that's a different way of thinking. That way is only only uh, sees life as this or that. And that one of them is the good one and one is the bad. That's duality. Seeing things in only two groups. And in Lakota ancient way, it's more than two. It's at least three. (coughs) There's unhealthy, there's healthy, and there's something else. So there's no duality in the ancient way. Yeah, the the the, the um, in duality it's this and that. In an ancient Lakota way, it's this, that, and the other. <laughs> and there's many times there's more than one other. But there's always going to be at least three three perspectives in the ancient way. This is why we didn't have good versus evil. But we changed. And I'll explain how that change came, okay? Um, but uh, anyway, this this is this is how of today a lot of Indians, uh, even if they're not Christian, they're still Christian influenced. They're still dualistic. They see things in only this or that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This is. Uh, these are just some, you know, some things I wanted to share. But anyway, like I said, on Shine River, a lot of people are very Christian influenced. And even those that are saying they're traditional, they see things through a Christian perspective, and they try to mix the two. They try to mix. Uh, first of all, they take Lakota ceremonies, and they try to, ch- you know, f- change it so that it fits the Christian way of looking at things. So they've taken the word Tungashila and translated it to mean God, the Christian God. But in Lakota Star Knowledge, there is no such thing. Tungashila, there's a whole bunch of them. They're the creators of the universe. There's a bunch of them. There's not just one. They're also helper spirits that live in special stones. Those are Tungashila too. 
In plural, you say, Tungashilapi. That's one of the definitions. The second definition is uh, when a, a, <clears throat> when a um, person becomes a grandfather, now they're Tungashila too. I mean, it's I mean not not like the spiritual helpers and the creators. No, 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 no. It just means it's grandfather. So this is uh, an, an, a second definition. The third definition was created in the 1800s when America was meeting with the chiefs and signing treaties between the two nations. You know, they, the president was uh, presented to them as someone who loves his people and only wants good things to happen for his people. So the Lakota chiefs were saying, ah, like a grandfather. And so the the, peop- the um, American military said, yes, like a grandfather. So the president of the United States is also called Tungasila. <laughs> Those are the three definitions. But it does not mean God. See, there there was a time period which I will discuss that that um, shows how Indians became Christian and Christian influenced. It was a brainwash. So this is why today you can ask any reservation you go to 99% of the time if you ask what does Tungashila mean 99% of the time you're going to get the answer God. That shows you how effective the brainwashing was because I just told you it does not mean that. Because we do not have a one God concept. We do not have just two genders. We have seven. See, it's always this, that, and the other. And sometimes there's more than one other. That's a really good example. But you see how much the Lakota Language Consortium violates Lakota spirituality and Lakota culture. So how can we speak you know, the uh, Lakota language <clears throat> according to uh, the Lakota Language Consortium way and be traditional? We can't. It doesn't work. Because they do not accept Lakota spirituality. They do not accept Lakota tradition. So how can you speak the language without the culture? Culture and language, they need each other. They go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. And when you try to just have one, it will fail. There are people like the Lakota Language Consortium, they're only focusing on language. Unfortunately, you have young Indians today who only focus on the culture. Both Sides are missing the boat because they're both missing one of the key components. I heard a young man say that. Yeah, our language is dying, but I I, I choose to, um, you know, focus more on the traditions and culture because that is the backbone of of who who being an Indian is. And I'm saying you're half correct. As a teacher, I have the right to say that. I said you're half correct. But the thing is, you only have half the backbone. You have the the backbone, but one side is missing. 
So this young man is like saying he, he say, look at his spine. Imagine his spine. <clears throat> and let's just imagine that him focusing only on the culture is only having the left side of the spine. And the Lakota Language Consortium, they only focus on the language. So it's like they only have the right side of the spine. Either way, the back is going to break. Because it only has one half. Now let's look at our lungs. We inhale, we exhale. When we inhale, this is the culture. When we exhale, this is the language. We need to do both. If you just focus on one, you will die. Try it. Try to exhale only. Eventually you have to inhale. The other way too, try to just inhale. Do nothing but inhale. Eventually you're going to have to go, <sighs> you have to exhale. You need to do both. So you see, that's what they're doing is duality. So they'll say also things like, um, what's another uh, aspect of this? They'll say, uh, I just focus on my strengths. I just focus on the positive, they'll say. And that's dualistic because they're they're saying that what they focus on is the good part. And our ancestors were not like that. Our ancestors were, they say, there's value in weakness because it's showing you where you still need to learn. And learning is a part of life. It's necessary. Because that's how we live. And then you know love. That's what our ancestors are saying. So weaknesses have a value, too. As neither one is the good one or the bad one. Both help you. The same argument is true for positive and negative. The universe is founded upon at least four elements. One is positive, one's negative, one is neutrality. And then you have positive particles that act like negative particles and negative particles that act like positive particles. Those are called ions. They're ne- they're very necessary for the universe to exist. If you just focus on positive, the universe will soon cease to exist. Just focusing on positive is like only exhaling. You will die. It's like only having half a spine. The back will break. So you focus on the whole picture and do not apply labels of good and bad but what can I learn from this maybe it can learn from me maybe it's peace maybe it's something else when you look at it like that that's the ancestral perspective and this is what the Lakota Language Consortium violates And young Lakota men who only focus on ceremonies and refuse to learn the language, they're also violating this concept of looking at everything. Because they only choose to find value in one aspect of life. That is duality. So now you know why. I do not support Lakota Language Consortium. And I pray for them as well as others who are 
choosing to only see one part of the total picture. That's so sad because it, it's they're closing their minds. They cannot comprehend how beautiful the universe is. The universe inside of them and the universe around them. It begins inside. This is the way the universe and all universes were created from within. So that's why to live a healthy life, we go, we start within ourselves. But unhealthy people, they don't want to do that. So they try to find it outside themselves. Or they in create a belief system that focuses on an item or a person or or a plant or something because they don't want to go within themselves so they're trying to find it outside themselves so they're actually going away from themselves which is what religion does takes you away from yourself